welcome to my channel and this is the PC lab crash course tutorial so in this tutorial this is what we are going to do we are going to learn basically every little thing about PC lab PC lab is, is a great tool for smartphone graphic designing if there's any other tool over there to be used for graphic designing on smartphone then the one and only app that I recommend is PC lab okay I really love PC lab and I've been using it for some years now and the works that you can use it for they are just awesome and mind-blowing so in this tutorial i wouldn't go for any intro let's just jump into it straight forward and get to know every little thing about pizza lab that you need to know okay if you are a beginner this is a must watch video for you you got to watch this video to the end and if you are using you've been using pizza lab for a while now you equally have to watch this tutorial perhaps there are some things that i will equally show you that you probably uh, don't know about yet okay so without further ado let's get this under okay so if you open the pizza lab this is the default page that you are going to see this is how everything will look okay so starting from this panel i will just show you few things over here now you can see these are the backgrounds okay this is the default background this is also another background in case you want to use it they are default backgrounds over here just in case you want to use them okay but i don't recommend you using this kind of backgrounds for your design okay i don't recommend you using this kind of backgrounds for your design it may not give you a perfect work as you might be anticipating or whatever i really like to start from scratch so i like using the default background whereby i can go ahead and change the color and everything i want okay so the first option over here showing like a folder it is called puzzle project okay this is where when you save a project this is where it will be saved okay a project in puzzle lab is simply a file that you can come back and edit later on okay let's assume i want to edit this particular project i'll just have to tap on it and it will appear in my file okay so i can go ahead and edit it if i want to okay so that is a puzzle lab project file and equally you can also share a puzzle lab project file with another puzzle lab user and the person will just go ahead and edit this particular design without having to start from scratch okay that's one powerful aspect of puzzle lab it works just like photoshop because in photoshop you can also equally share what you call psd file with another photoshop user whereby the photoshop user another photoshop user can just go ahead and edit it without having to start from scratch that is the same thing happening over here in puzzle lab okay so let's go okay so when you open puzzle lab this is what you're going to see after the the project file we have the default and i've already taken you through this so we have the letter over here a test which will be showing over here that is already selected okay so let me take you back to this uh, icon which is like a pencil to or whatever it is basically for editing okay so when you tap on it it will enable you to edit this test okay so first of all you have to select a test before that or select any object before that edit button will appear okay so assuming i did not select anything you can see that the edit and the delete button are gone okay but if i select the test right now the edit and the delete button are appearing okay so what i have to do now is to tap on edit and i'll choose the first one over here now when i choose it it will enable me to edit and write my own thing okay so let's assume i want to write serene okay so i'll just write serene at Okay, let's assume this is what i want to write i'll just tap on ok now let me just take you through this interface this interface we have this tt over here is it to just help you to make your test either capitalize or small letter okay so when you tap on it to change to capital letters when you tap on it to change to small letters and the next icon over here is delete icon whereby you can use it to delete the test the whole test that you've entered and we have the cancel we have okay so when you tap on okay the test will appear over here all right so let's come back to this particular edit tool again now you could see that we have so many things over here now this particular one is for copy when you tap on it you make a duplicate of your test that you've entered okay so 
if we don't need this test we just have to tap on delete okay and need to delete like this okay so let's come back to the edit again and let's try and look at the various options over here now we have this tt over here okay it's for size it's for size you need to increase the size or decrease the size of your work okay so the next thing over there is rotation icon whereby you can use it to rotate your work like this okay the other option is a move tool okay this will help you to align your work to the middle or to any other side you want to move it to okay if you want to move it up you can move it like that if you want to move it to the middle just do it like that and tap on a check mark and you are good to go so the next option over here is the color option whether you can choose any color for your work okay you can choose any color for your test or whichever thing you are working with okay and we have copy and the rest okay so basically that that is it for the editing icon now we have this redo we have this back arrow at the top here it's just like if you've done something which is let's say a mistake or error you've made and you want to go back you just have to tap on it and it will send you back okay you can see as i'm tap tapping on it this is what is happening you can you will see that earlier on we've deleted one test but right now as i've tapped on it back 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 it has brought the test back okay so that is the power of this arrow at the top okay now we have this icon like search icon with a plus inside it is called the zoom icon okay you either use it to zoom in or zoom out okay so if you want to zoom out okay you can just tap on it like that and hold your two fingers on the screen and expand it okay that's you are zooming out like this you see that everything has now become bold big in your face now you want to zoom out you can just pinch your two fingers on the screen like this and it will go so basically that is it so assuming you've actually zoomed out so big that you want to zoom back to 100 percent immediately just tap on the 500 or whichever value you zoom out to and it will be brought back to the 100 percent immediately okay so if you want to have access to your working area and work just tap on the zoom icon back again because if this thing is being selected or highlighted you cannot work on your working space okay unless you tap on it like this then you can go ahead and work over here now we have what we call the grid now what is the use of this grid this grid will help you to align your work okay so we have this you can push it back if you want to add another grid you can tap on a plus over here if you want to add it at the other side you can tap on this plus and you keep on adding okay so basically that is it and we also have this icon that will help you in terms of alignment when you tap on this and you did you see what just appeared okay that means that the test ring out has been aligned to the middle that's how come the middle line and the other line have appeared what red okay so when the thing has been aligned this is what will happen after you tapping on this icon this is what will happen i i personally call it the magnet icon in pizzler because it will help you to align your test whenever you are using it okay so that you don't go over anything you don't do any mistakes so basically this is a powerful tool in pizza lab that you have to be exploring okay because when you are designing graphic one important thing in graphic design is your alignment if you design anyhow anyhow your work will not look perfect okay so if you check every graphic designer's work you will see that alignment is always over there okay so basically that is for grid now we have this icon over here i call it layer icon because when you tap on it you will see all the various layers that you have okay so basically i have only serene art let's let's assume i've added something else okay let's assume i've just added this shape 
So when I tap on this, you will see that the shape has also appeared at the top over here. Okay. So let me take this opportunity to also talk about these things over here. You have the lock button at the top. Okay. So when you tap on a lock button, it means when you come back to the working area, you cannot work with the shape. Okay. Whichever thing you've locked, it means you cannot work with it. Okay. So unless you unlock it before you can work with it. And when you tap on the eye icon, icon over here, it means you are hiding it. It will not be visible. And this is the delete button. It will delete it. The other one is edit button. It's just like the one we saw at the right corner, at the corner over here. So basically, that is it for the layer panel. Now, let's go to the plus icon at the middle over here. The plus icon over here, it will just help you to add either image, shape, or any other thing to your working space. So if you want to add a test, you can also come to the plus icon, tap on test, then you enter the test that you want to actually enter by tapping on the, this edit icon, then you go ahead. But we are not going to enter any test, so we just cancel this and go, okay? So I'll just delete it. So let's, let's say we want to enter the current dates, okay? As at the time I'm recording this tutorial, it is... 25th of May 2021 that is the current date okay so the next thing that you you also want to do is to add stickers if you want to add sticker just tap on sticker if you want to add shapes just tap on shapes if you want to add an image from your gallery you can equally go ahead and tap on from gallery and if you want to draw something you can equally tap on draw and you are good to go and this icon it is a save button okay you could say that i've sh i've talked about project file already okay so those project files this is how you save them if you want to save as a project just tap on save as project then you name it you name your project with whichever name that you want to name it okay once you name it then you are good to go then saving is done okay then you've saved it now if you want to save directly you just tap on save as image and i believe you've already know about this so there's no need going over it let's just go back to the, our main working space and continue now we have the share button over here the share button will enable you to share image directly with other people on social media platforms. so before you will be able to share it first of you must save the work so when you tap on the share icon it will bring you to the saving panel whereby you'll be able to save your work first before you proceed with it okay if you're enjoying this tutorial please don't forget to give this video a like and also subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed yet okay so the next thing over here it's you can say it's like a quote okay quotation mark so basically it contains quotes that you can literally put in your work if you need some okay okay so you see who six shall find and we have a lot of them over here to begin begin if you tap on them they will appear in your working space like this okay they will appear in your working space like this but we don't need them so i'm just going to delete it now and the next thing over here is the three dots at the top right corner now when you tap on this dot this is what you're going to see use image from gallery full screen use image from camera export image image size contacts as like if you want to report something you have tutorials remove ads recover auto save open plp file about and exit now when you use image from gallery okay when you come here use image from from gallery it simply means that this image will become your static background it means you cannot move this image so let me just go through my gallery and check one image that that i will use for you okay assuming i want to use this particular image that means it has become my background there is no way i can move it okay no matter what i do i cannot move it because it is now my background okay it is now my background so i cannot move it all right so basically that is it using image from gallery by tapping on these three dots over here that's what it means so let me just undo this okay i'll just go back and give it another color okay i'll come back to this color panel 
but for now don't worry all right so i have black as my background let me just delete this thing because i don't need them now okay so for full screen you already know when you tap on it your screen will become like this everything will be off but if you want to get your full screen back you tap on this icon and everything will be back to normal now if you want to export image you export and you also be allowed to save the image before you export it now if you want basic tutorials on uh puzzle lab this is where you can get them tutorials tutorials column that's where you can get them okay so we have the auto, re recover auto save and the rest the plp file just like i talked to you about it is like the psd file in photoshop okay it is just like the psd file in photoshop meaning you can share with others to also work on it without having to start from scratch now we are done with that so let's come back to these few icons over here so we have stickers import draw shapes bezier and arrow okay we have these things over here now before you will be able to get access to this thing you must first of tap on this hexagonal icon over here before you'll be able to access all these things so when you tap on sticker this thing will automatically appear this particular one will automatically appear so you can also scroll through and look for your preferred sticker that you want to use okay we have few of them over here you choose your preferred one and we also have emoji that you can equally choose from okay we have emojis available that you can choose from but basically i'm not going to use anything i'll just clear it off now when you come to import this time around when you import a, a picture you can use it on your working space it will not be a static background in your work okay so let me use the same picture again so this time around you can move it about play with it anyhow you want to use it okay so basically that is the difference between using image from gallery when you are working and importing an image okay so when you use the three dots at the top right corner over here you are basically going to get a static background for your work with the picture that you have selected okay now for the draw you can use the drawing tool to make a lot of designs on your work okay so we have the size that you can play around with increase it to your desired number okay so let's assume it is at 11 and we have the smoothness over here you choose it the way you want it to be we have fill inside when you select fill inside it means anything that you draw on your working space the inside of it will be filled with a color that you've selected we have dash line dash line simply means when you are drawing on your working space it will appear as dash and we also have neon effect meaning the outer side of it will be glowing just like neon and we have the radius that simply means how the curve will appear either sharp or normal all right so let's just do a practice over here so we are we are saying that our pen size is 11 and the color that i'm selecting is yellow so this is it okay this is it just a normal drawing now let's tap on fill inside and you see what will happen so i've drawn like this you can see inside has been filled inside has been filled just like that okay that is when you enable fill inside now let's go with dash line you see dash line this is how it will appear it will appear like this on your work when you are drawing this is how it will appear dash 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 so that is the dash line and let's just clear it because we literally don't need it so neon effect as i said the outer side will be glowing just like you can see right now okay so basically that is it for the drawing tool now let's come back to our now let's come back to our tools again we have shapes so when you tap on this by default this square will be selected you can tap on this and you see a number of shapes over here that you can choose and work with okay you can choose a number of shapes and work with them and you can also change the color of the shape over here 
depending on what you want you can change the color of the shape over here you can also use gradient for the shape as well that is if you like gradient instead of normal color all right so basically that is it you can add a stroke to your work the stroke you can change the color of the stroke as well you can either choose to apply gradient or whichever one and you also have the radius the blur radius the blur radius as you can see it will just enable part of the stroke to be faded away okay but right now we don't need any other anything like this this is just a tutorial for educational purpose only so you just have to know the various tools in pixel lab and their uses so let me just clear this and we're back to busier tool so busier tool is basically for drawing okay let me change my background so that you see it clearly as i enable it so i'll use this color no i think let me use something like white so that when i input the bezier tool you will see it okay so by default the color of it is black okay so when you input it you can use it to draw different different objects okay depending on how you know the use of it okay you can use it to draw objects now let me take my time and and talk to you literally about this busier tool over here before uh, I do any other thing else. so first of all you tap on it you could see that the this has been selected okay you can also select this you can also select this now with the first one selected when you come here it means anywhere you tap on the screen there will be a continuation of the previous busier tool that has pointed so let if I point this area it's that as a continuation of the previous one now when you tap on the second one it will help you to do alignment or to adjust your work and see where it needs to be moved to okay you know where it needs to be moved to uh -huh. so that is basically the difference between these two now the third one will help you to move your your busier drawing around okay your busier drawing around now let's assume you are done drawing your bezier tool okay you are done drawing with your bezier tool like this and you want to match them if you want to match them or like make the lines connect at the end tap on this icon and it will connect and if you want inside to be filled just increase the opacity then select your preferred color then inside will be filled okay so basically that is that is it for your bezier tool you can increase the stroke or put it to zero okay it depends on your preference okay so basically that is it for the bezier tool and i hope you liked it and the last one over here is the arrow okay we have different types of the arrow you can also change the color of your arrow and play with it like this okay that's if you want to point at something you can use the arrow increase the stroke reduce opacity and increase the opacity of the stroke as you like it to be so i'm just going to clear it off and we proceed now let me bring you back to letter a okay so when you tap on letter a at the down here it also stands for the test just like we did earlier on the test and the quotes that we've seen earlier on so i don't think there is a need for us to go over that again now because literally you've already know about it so let's have a look at the last option over here which is basically this now when you come here you see color transparent image size crop image from gallery and from camera now let's start with color okay so when you tap on color it will enable you to actually change the background color of your way so whichever color that you tap on over here will appear as your background color okay so basically that is it and you can also choose gradient for your background if you like if you are someone who like to work with gradients you can choose gradient for your work okay but if you want to go with just a normal one color you can also go with it All right so when you are done with this just tap on the check mark over here then you are good to go now for transparent transparent simply means that when you are done working and you want to save your work let's assume you want to save in png format png format is a transparent format so if you want to save as png format that's you are basically going to save it as a transparent okay so when you tap on transparent 
this is how your work will appear there will be no background that is the meaning of transparency there will be no background okay so let me just put the background back now when you come to image size image size is where you set the required dimension of your work you know pixel lab works in pixel so whichever dimension that you want to input just make sure you input it correctly as pixels okay when it, whenever you want to design something just come here and input the value that you want okay just input any value that you want depending on the design that you are going to make so just do the best out of it okay and this is the height okay we have width and height so you can use any size at all that will suit your design use it for your work so we have the width and we have the height now we have the default presets as well default presets they are basically custom image sizes that you can choose from so we have things like square profile picture youtube channel banner youtube thumbnail facebook cover art google plus cover photo and we have twitter header size so depending on whichever one that you choose that's how your work is going to appear let's assume i choose google plus cover photo this is how our work is going to appear let's assume i choose twitter header size this is how our work is going to appear okay so let me just go by using that of the youtube channel so that you also get to see it okay so youtube channel this is how the size is going to be now when you come to crop okay for you to crop you must select an image that you probably want to crop so let's select this image now when you select this image you can come back to crop okay wow i did not talk to you much about this okay let me just use this opportunity to talk to you about this as well so with this image selected there are few other things that you can equally do about this you, when you tap on reselect it means you are going back to your working like your your gallery and you're going to pick a file to re, to replace this one that has been selected okay when you tap on delete it means you are permanently deleting this from your working space and when you tap on crop it means you are going to change the size of your work okay means you want to change the size of it depending on your preference these are the various kind of cropping available by default okay and if you also want to do if you also want to work with this kind of cropping without having to use the default ones available just make sure that you unlock it and do it your own way okay make sure you unlock it and do it however you want it so basically that is it for cropping if you want to rotate it you can you can use any of these buttons over here okay you can use any of these buttons over here to rotate so that is it basically for the cropping now with the same image selected you can see copy copy over here you can see to front to back position and the rest so when you tap on copy you are going to make a duplicate of it like this okay when you tap on copy this is what's going to happen you are making literally a duplicate of this and when you tap on to back meaning you are sending the work to the back of all the other elements on your working space so, so you can see as i tap so you can see as i tap on to back it has now gone to the back of the test that i've already entered on our working space okay so when you want to bring it to the front you tap on to front and that is it it is as simple as that when you want to position it you can use this tool okay move it about the best way that you want okay these tools are here to help you now when you come to relative position relative position simply means you position the work either at the middle center to the left corner to the right corner or to the bottom or whichever side so basically when you tap on it you are going to say this you are going to say this 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 
okay so those are the things that are available in relative position now for relative size it simply means you're coming to reduce the size of your work let's assume you increase it like this this is how it's going to be so it's used for both increasing and reducing the size of your image that is it for relative size now if you want to move only width or only the height you have to tap on or disable the maintain ratio option okay you can see that when i'm moving this both the width and the height are moving in the same proportion okay so we have to disable the maintain ratio so when you disable that is and i move the width only the width will be moving like this okay when i move the height only the height will be moving like this i hope you got this okay so that is it basically and with the same image selected there are few other things that you can do when you come to color you want to change the color of the whole work by default when you enable the color it will appear red okay that is it but we don't need it now so let's just forgo it so when you come to texture texture simply means that when you select this image and you apply texture whatever you are applying as a texture will cover the whole thing over here okay so let's see an example let's assume i'm using this image to to apply as a texture okay so i'll just tap on this check mark now you can see that the image has taken my previous image away it is now appearing as the image we had first okay so you can also scale the size of your texture okay or you also maintain ratio Okay, so let's assume I make the scale of my my texture is 10%. This is how it's going to appear. If I make it 205%, this is how it's going to appear. So basically, that is it. And you can select your texture easily like this. Okay. And when you are done with the texture, we have what we call opacity. Opacity will just reduce the thickness of your work or increase it. So if I do it like this, you can see that it's no more showing like it's used to show or when you compare it to the other one on the working space you will see that the other one is showing clearly more than the one that i've reduced the opacity for okay so basically that is it for opacity and we have color filters color filters will help you to apply color changes to your work okay it's it's more or less like photo retouching okay you can see when i'm playing with the hue this is what is happening at the moment okay you can see the change from the main work at the top right kind over there you can see what is changing if you if you increase the saturation you can see what is happening if you increase the brightness you can see what is happening okay and if you increase the contrast so you can see what is happening so basically that is it for color filters now we have stroke if you want to apply stroke to your work enable it and your stroke will appear you change the color of your stroke to whatever you want it's as simple as that so if you are interested in using pixel lab you first of all have to know the tools that made up pixel lab and how to use them very well now we have eraser eraser is basically used to erase part of your works that you literally don't need so let's assume with the eraser selected and everything selected and i want to delete or i want to erase i'll just clean and that's all okay i'll just have to clean like this and that will be all okay but actually i don't want to do that so i'll just come back over here now we have what we call mask mask will help you to cut your work into a specific shape that you want when you enable mask this is what's going to happen it also works just like the bezier tool whereby you move the arrows over here to adjust the shape that you want the mask to take now when you tap on outside it to clean the outside part of whatever it has selected and the inside will be left like that so this is it when you tap on out this is it when you tap on in this is how it's going to appear so basically that is it for the masking tool okay and i'm going to clean that now with that done we have what we call 
erase color now erase color by default it will select white in your design and try to erase it now why why do we use the erase color option we use the erase color option to sometimes cut off some part of design that we literally don't need okay so when this is enabled you can see the change that happened right now okay look at remover and look at the background of the other person okay the other design whereby we have those small dots dots behind the person showing that there is no background when i type when i enable the color remover check it you can see what happened the white elements are gone now if you don't want white to be gone you can tap on this color drop icon and come to your working area move the pointer to the specific color that you want to take off then you tap on a check mark like this okay then the color will be taken off okay in our case we are trying to take off blue black so the blue black in the second design has gone so basically that is it okay and we have the rotate options over here the rotate is basically what we saw earlier on with our test okay and we have a 3d rotate that is a x and y axis rotation like this or like this okay so basically that is it and we also have the 3d shape 3d shape will enable you to put in some kind of realistic view of your work if you want it to be oblique it can be if you want it to be perspective it can be like that and all, all that you have to do is to play with the darkness the, the rotation xyz rotation then you also play with the color either black auto or gradient so away from that we have what you call the perspective tool so what the perspective does is that when you tap on it you'll be able to position your work like this and also position it depending on how you want it so once you've done that you can just tap on enable and this is what's going to happen basically this is how it will appear depending on how you have made it okay so once you are okay with it like this you can leave it or you can work around it again so basically i'm just going to bring it back to the normal then we proceed with our work now from the perspective we have what we call shadow so the shadow when you enable it it will appear beneath your work okay so let me change that by default the color of the shadow is black and my background too is black so let me just change the color of the shadow so that you see it clearly so you can increase the blur radius of the shadow okay i guess you can see it right now it is yellow and you can also push it to the x column or y column depending on whichever one that is okay with you okay now we have what we call the inner shadow as well okay the inner shadow will appear like on your working area not at the back it will appear let's say in front of it okay so that is the inner shadow now when you come to the emboss emboss feature for those of you using android version 10 and above currently the emboss feature is not working properly for you and I've, there is a video on on the channel for that and don't worry if, if you've not been able to access that video and learn from it then i equally uh, i will equally make another video for you because currently i'm also using android version 10 so this is what will happen if you are using android version 10 and you enable emboss this is what's going to happen it will not appear well it's going to cut your test in some way you can see the line appearing on my test okay on my picture rather the line appearing over there is supposed not to be there but since i'm using android version 10 that is where that thing is showing over there but for those using android version 9 and below this is not going to happen to you your work will appear nicely after applying the emboss okay so basically that is it for the emboss feature and that is it for the other features relating to whenever a picture is being selected or a shape is being selected okay 
and we've done with this we are done with this as well so basically that is it for this tutorial and i hope to see you in the other one and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are new here and don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoy it and if you have any other thing feel free to leave a comment below i will attend to each and every one of you before the next tutorial all right bless up